So, fun fact, I always forget to record my cooking sessions. So this is a good opportunity while I press record to tell everybody what we've done so far in case you're running behind. So in our Cuisinart, we've got a cup and a half or 18, uh, sorry, we have a cup and a half of ground um, gram wafers or 18 gram wafers that you pulse until they are from. We've got six tablespoons of unsalted room temperature butter and two tablespoons of the sugar of your choice. So I use brown, but you can use white, not a problem. I've pulsed it all together. <clears throat> and now you can see that there isn't separate pieces of butter. It's all sort of nice. And I want to say homogenized, but I know that's not the right word. So, but it's come together nicely. Yay. So I've got myself a 10 inch spring form pan. If you have an eight or nine inch, that's not a problem. It might affect baking time by five or 10 minutes, but we can work with that. I'm gonna take it off the, um, what? That is now on my and collect it. And start by just using your fingers to press it all in. What I like to do afterwards, and I'll show you, is I use my measuring cup to make sure I get all of the edges. Just make sure I have everything. Don't let any of that tasty crust go to waste. Because we want the starbucks to be the cheesecake filling, not just a huge mouthful of graham cracker. If you find everything sticking to your hands, just some cold water on your fingertips will make everything come off nicer. Sort of like when we made um, sushi and we want that sticking right to stick to our hands. Back, if anyone made it to our one in-person cooking class. What's the difference between salted and unsalted for this purpose? Um, literally the amount of salt. So salted butter is not that salty. You can use it in a pinch. I find it a little tricky with baking because you would have to adjust the amount of salt that goes into the rest of your recipe. And in this recipe, there is no salt. So it might alter the flavor slightly, but you're using so little that I don't think it's a big deal. It's a little cheaper at the grocery store because they know that nobody likes to use unsalted or salted butter. So I'm just using my measuring cup here to make sure everything is nice and packed. So Ellie, was that a greased um, uh, pan? Um, I will be honest and say I don't grease mine because you like it's it on the bottom. And if you let your cakes cool properly, you should not, good job, Penny. If you let your cakes cool properly, you should never have to grease your pan. They should come away from the pan on its own. So like at the end of this recipe, we want it to cool for an hour before we even put it in the fridge. And then you can take a warm knife run it around and then everything should pop off very easily. And so that goes with any baking actually. If you were to bake a cake in a regular cake pan, you don't really need to grease it. You should put parchment on the bottom because that could be a little sticky, but it should always pull, it, it shrinks down as it cools. Thank you. That, that was a very long answer for your very simple question. <laughs> Um, so we are using the same bowl that we used for our crust. So I'm just gonna give it a quick wipe. Literally in the recipe, it says wipe down your bowl. So I shall listen. I'm not gonna be too fussy if some crumbs get into the filling because it's all going the same place. Now, if you don't have a food processor, you can do this in your KitchenAid Mixmaster. You could do it by hand, but your arms will get tired. Um, I once made this cheesecake with the whisk attachment on my KitchenAid, and my mother said to me, oh, it's so light and fluffy. And I said, thank you. And she says, no, that's wrong. Winnipeg cheesecake is not light and fluffy. It is dense. <laughs> so, thank you, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> um, I feel like a brick. 
So my mom also said that your cheesecake batter should have lumps in it. I'm going to respectfully ignore that advice from her. So we are back at it with our food processor. We're doing four packages. Our oven. Pardon me? Do we preheat our oven now? Yes, so let's preheat our oven to 350. Thank you for the reminder. Do you put all the cream cheese in at one time? Yes, yeah, so it'll make your life easier if you slice it so that you're not trying to get your blades to cut through giant chunks. Is it okay to use three? That, that's what I was, that's if what I have. If you have three, then you're going to adjust everything down by one because we have four, um, we have four containers of cream cheese, so we're using four eggs. So you're going to use three eggs. Yeah, I use three eggs. Yeah. I threw this all together because I didn't have the process are upstairs and I wanted to watch what you were doing with the processor. Oh, no problem. Is it four eggs for four cups of cream cheese? Exactly. So we're doing, we're starting with our cream cheese. I should put the blade back in though. I'm going to be doing a vanilla cheesecake, but this cheesecake would also work really nice as a lemon cheesecake. I will get to that shortly for you guys. As well, I know that I just went on and on about how much I love brown sugar. Um, for the filling, I'm going to recommend using white because otherwise your filling will be slightly brown and that's not the most appetizing look for a cheesecake. It would taste delicious. It would just look funky. Should I have opened these in advance? Probably, but now I'm in real time with all of you, so it's okay. So just so we, in case you're much quicker at this than I am, we are doing four cups of cream cheese or four packages, four eggs, one and a half cups of sugar, and then you're going to add your flavoring of choice. So once again, I'm using vanilla, but um, a lemon would, or the same amount of lemon juice would be delicious. Separate seams. So you could do this all in a mixer if your food oh, processor isn't big enough for this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what are the ingredients? Let's see. Four cups of cream cheese, four eggs, one and a half cups sugar, and how much vanilla? I am vanilla? doing two teaspoons. Three? Two teaspoons. Two teaspoons, okay. Okay, uh, what do I have to do? I think my mix master can or my mix also. I'm gonna give it a quick pulse. Just to make all that cheese. recipe in the food processor cookbook says you could use half cream cheese, half cottage cheese. Um, so if you are in a pinch, there are other options. I mean, I never have four cups of, or four bricks of, of cream cheese lying around my house. Okay, okay. So if you're like me and your food processor bowl is crazy full right now. Just let it go on steel blade for a little bit just to sort of whip up that cream cheese, break it up, and then everything else should be Oh my god. A lot of cream cheese. Okay, now we're adding in our eggs. One at a time, both 
want to let any shells get in there, but also because of cash root, we want to make sure there's no eggs. If you do get a shell in your egg, use the bigger shell um, to sort of scoop it up. It will act as a magnet and it'll attract itself to one another. So we do one at a time. I thought that was my thought. Just the light playing tricks on me. All righty. So I'm going to add my one and a half cups <clears throat> of white sugar. All my packages around. Everybody's doing the cooking there. a good chance I'm going to have to move to my mix master, unfortunately, because this is looking very full and very dicey. But on the off chance it works, I'm going to add my two teaspoons of vanilla now and give it a blend. All right, so you want to get this smooth and silky, or if you are a true Winnipegger, you want some lumps in it. Again, I don't understand the reasoning for that. <laughs> I, I don't agree with that lumps thing. I think we want it smooth and silky. We always You say. absolutely do, but I promised my mother I would say it. Okay. Well, <laughs> maybe, you know, she was from a different school of cheesecake designers. She chose not to attend the class, so she doesn't get to defend her reasoning. <laughs> Well, I'm thinking maybe the lumps just melt as it's baking. Maybe. Your cream cheese. Everyone's like this. No, no one approves of this. Susan. All right. Okay. Is that mixing properly being so full? All right, it didn't die. So that's a good start, but I'm gonna use my spatula to sort of help move some things along here. That's a Hudson's Bay spoon. Yes, it is. It's like <laughs> matching pants. I like a good theme. I have one of those too. <laughs> Did you make yours already, Molly? Did you make your cake already? Well, I didn't make it exactly. I put, because I didn't want to schlep the processor upstairs. It's a big processor, so I left it downstairs and I, I did it sort of by hand, the crust, and now I've got the, uh, but I only use three, for some reason I thought it would be three uh, three um, packages of, uh, and three eggs, so that's what I did. But no, I, I put it in a bowl, now I'm going to put it, once, once we get to the stage of putting it on, I'm going to, because I'm holding on to my iPad. Um, the package says three and three, so that could be what led you astray. Get rid of them. Actually, actually, in the yellow processor cookbook, it is three packs. It's a pound and a half of oh, cream cheese it? and three eggs. Oh my gosh! Okay, I'm, I'm going. I'm looking at it. Oh. Maybe I'm gourmetia. Maybe I just like a really big cheesecake. I don't know now. It's a rich. It's just a richer one. It's a bigger it's one. A big one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. We always need bigger. Bigger is better. No, because no, I couldn't. I couldn't find it. I've been looking everywhere trying to find one with four pounds, and I couldn't find it anywhere. Now, is this in the processor one? Yep, this is the yellow book. Uh -huh, I got that yellow book, so it's the easy cheesecake. I took it yeah. off the net, but the net had um, three three cups of uh, cream cheese. 
and three eggs. Well, and the, the Philadelphia uh, packages also have a three and three. Oh, okay. And they're a very good cheesecake. But are they for 10 inch pans or are they for smaller pans? Um, I honestly don't know. I have to get a ruler out because the last time I made one of these and brought it to somebody's house, they returned. I ha they left it on the pa on the pan bottom and I never got it back. Oh. <laughs> so I have to go find a new bottom for the can for the pan. <laughs> I think the best bet would just be to buy a new one, but I'm not going to say that to you. <laughs> well, well, no, it was a really good pan. It was a different. It was a, a pro. It doesn't have the spring on the side. It's the real thing. I have to say, I once made um, a cheesecake for a function. I'm going to put my, my filling. So my mom said that next time, do four, four things of cream cheese. So maybe it's Probably because it makes a bigger one. You can have thinner slices that way. And then you have to cut it like a, like, like a like, um, buffet style, where they cut it in the circle first, and they cut the little yep. squares. Yeah. That's the bar mitzvah way to cut a cake. That is correct. <laughs> you still need me? Um, is, is, that, is, that, is that standing up by itself? Uh, sort of, yeah. Because if you don't move it, it'll be fine. Well, I, I just put this in and then you call it with the People that are cooking along with me, at this point, my is done. I decided to listen to my mom. I kept a few lumps because I, I'm sure she's full of it, but let's find out how that big bite of cream cheese is gonna taste. Um, so very easy. The next step is putting it in the oven. Um, one recommendation I saw is to fill a pie plate with water, and you're gonna put that on the bottom rack of your oven. And so that's gonna keep everything nice in your oven while you're cooking your cheesecake, and it'll hopefully result in less cracks. Your cheesecake is going to go in the middle rack above that water bath. And we are going to bake it for 40 to 50 minutes. You're going to know that your cheesecake is done when the edges are lightly brown. The middle will still be slightly jiggling, but not loose. Um, and then once we're done, that 40 to 50 minutes, don't worry, we're not going to sit on this Zoom call the entire time, so I'm going to tell you now. You're going to open up your oven a crack. You're going to let it cool in the oven that has been turned off for one hour. This is gonna help, hopefully, reduce the chance of cracks in your cheesecake. So once again, it's 350 degrees with a pie plate of water on the bottom rack, cheesecake middle rack for 40 to 50 minutes, and then turn off the oven and let it cool inside the oven with it opened slightly ajar. So I'm gonna put mine in now, and then we're gonna get working on toppings, okay? Holy crap. Do you have to put the pie plate in there? Pardon me? You have to put the pie plate in there? You don't I'm have to. Pie plate. I don't mind if it cracks, but I... No problem if you don't mind it. Just a recommendation. Did you set the oven for 40 minutes or 50 minutes? 40 to 50. So check it at 40, Pen, and then okay. if it's not done, leave it okay. in the you want to taste the sun? Does this have raw egg? Um, no. <laughs> no raw egg. I can't do that. For 40 minutes. This step what? For 40 minutes? That's the oven, but how do I shut it off? When it... In 40 minutes? Yeah. Uh, I, mean, I want to shut the, the oh, ringer off. Everybody. Oh, you, you, you want it. Oh, without the No, I'll, I'll just, I'll just watch it. Okay, so you can top these cheesecakes with really anything you like. Again, classic Winnipegger, you just open up a can of cherry topping and you throw that on top and you call it a day. Um, I can't stand by that. So I'm going to teach you guys how to make a homemade strawberry and blueberry sauce. So the first step to making your strawberry sauce is cutting three cups worth of strawberries. You can always just put fresh strawberries on top. That would be beautiful, but this is fun. Ellie, I'm using raspberries. That is acceptable. So I'll show can you I, how. Can I mix raspberries and blueberries or should I keep them separate? You can mix them. 
If that's what you find tasty, absolutely. So I'm just cutting the big slices. They're gonna break down on the stove top. And I judge that canned, that can of um, cherry filling, um, but I shouldn't because when I was making cheesecakes for my sister's wedding, I was doing all these fancy like chocolate dipped strawberries and white chocolate ganache with raspberries. And I bought my sister's mother-in-law because she wanted that cherry topping. And I said it was disgusting and no one would like it, but that was the first one to go off the dessert table. So I was wrong. These toppings will be on cheesecake, but they would also be good on a Sunday, on your pancakes. Okay. So if you want to do blueberry, you can use, now for both of these, you could use fresh or frozen. I'm doing fresh strawberries. I could only find frozen blueberries, so great opportunity. So your blueberries, you're also going to do three cups. If you're doing raspberries, same thing, Penster. But what, sorry, is the three all together? Three cups of berry, correct. Oh, berries, okay. And you're going to put them directly into a saucepan. Yeah. These are from my garden and from the freezer. <laughs> I love my garden. Um, my garden is mostly decoration. Okay. There's nothing edible out of it yet. All right. I'm glad to use them up before the this season's raspberries start. Okay. Oh, see, I don't even have raspberries yet. The bush is just starting to get some leaves. That's also important in my family. You need to have a raspberry bush, I was told when I bought my house. I hope somebody comes to visit my garden one of these days. <laughs> hint, hint. Me? <laughs> Not like yeah, well, that's possible. I know. I'd I love know. to see a garden. I'd love to have some fresh raspberries too. Well, maybe, maybe <laughs> they come, the world will have changed. Yeah. Hope so. Everybody. So I've got my strawberries. So there's sort of two ways of going to do this sauce. I'm going to show you both. So for both of them, we're doing three cups of fruit and we are doing a tablespoon of lemon juice. Just to cut the sweetness of the berries, um, it adds a little bit of tartness, it just makes the flavor a little more um, like complicated, but better. So I'm gonna squeeze some fresh lemon juice into this. Pick up the seed. One tablespoon? One tablespoon. And I'm going to add half a cup or a third of a cup of sugar. So it depends on how sweet you like your topping. So I'm doing a third of a cup because I sort of like the tartness of the berries and the lemon. Now while you guys do that, I'm just gonna get my blueberry pot started as well so you can see just a slight difference. Now we prepare these. And the difference really is going to come with um, how I use cornstarch, which is our thickening agent. So I've got my frozen blueberries. They are still beautiful and delicious. I mean, three cups of that. Oh, blueberry juice in the computer. Oops. Not saw anything. How much cornstarch? Ah, I'm going to do it in just a moment. So I'm adding my third of a cup of sugar to my blueberries as well. So here's where we're going to do things slightly different depending on the fruit. Strawberries naturally have more water in them. So as I cook it down, um, the juices are going to sort of come out a bit. And so I'm not adding any extra water to this. I'm going to let it cook down in its own juice. So because of that, I'm just going to add cornstarch directly to the pot. 
And I'm going to add one tablespoon of cornstarch. So here it's really acting as a thickening agent. In our blueberries, we're actually adding water to this. And because of that, I want to use my cornstarch a little differently. I'm going to create a slurry. Um, and basically what a slurry will do is it will thicken, but it'll also make it look glisteny. So if you guys have ever had um, like a really thick sauce at a Chinese food restaurant and it's also very glossy, it's because they made a cornstarch slurry. So to make your slurry, that's a terrible word. I apologize that I keep saying slurry. That's really gross. You're doing one tablespoon of cornstarch. tablespoons of water and you're doing it in a separate bowl. How much water? Two tablespoons. And when you're using slurry, you do not add it in in advance. You wait until your sauce has cooked down and then you add it in as a final step and you're going to cook it for a few minutes and then it's going to all sort of come together and thicken up. So because my blueberries do not have as much of the natural sort of juices and water that my strawberries do. I'm adding a third of a cup of water to the blueberries. What should I do by mixing the two together? I need to do um, the, the cornstarch slurry that I'm doing. I'm gonna take these both to my stove. I'm gonna bring you guys over with me so you can see how these cook. medium low heat. There's no need to rush this because our cake still has some time to cook. With my strawberry sauce, it's fairly hands off. I've added everything together. I'm going to let the temperature come up and I'm going to just let it cook down. And I'm going to reduce it until I like, until it looks like what I want to put on my, um, so if you want a really runny sauce, you keep it going until it's runny. And if you want to wait for it to thicken up, uh, as well, if you like to sort of keep the shape of your strawberries, don't cook it for long at all. The one thing I'm going to say though is you want your sugar to dissolve. You do not want like a gritty bite of strawberries. And for your once the blueberries start breaking down and cooking and they come to a slight boil, that's when we're going to add our cornstarch. Sorry. How's everybody doing here? Okay. So we can see the two pots here. And again, no judgment if you want to just buy a topping. That is good too. I'm going to resist the urge to open up the oven and look at the cheesecake because that is a good way to ruin a cake. Just for the sake of the lesson, I am going to sort of speed up my cooking process. I'm going to keep an eye so nothing burns. But you can do it low and slow. Um, Ellie, the uh, cornstarch and the water, do you put the water, you mix the cornstarch with the water or? 
Yeah, so the two tablespoons of water, they're just separate right now. The two tablespoons of water and the one tablespoon of cornstarch. One tablespoon of water and one tablespoon of cornstarch? Right, two water, one cornstarch. Okay, thank you. When do you add them? When do you add the slurry? I'm gonna add the slurry once my blueberries come to a boil, because that means that I sort of cooked the sugars a bit. Because fruit juices like this are naturally going to reduce on their own. The sugars are going to caramelize as it's going to reduce down. Oh, that's a giant fly, Jesus. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. Uh, and then you put it on top, I guess, eh? Yeah. So your cornstarch is going to help that thickening process along. Are the blueberries going to still look like blueberries or are they going to be like sauce? Somewhere in the middle. Somewhere in the middle, it's gonna, you're, you're still gonna have some whole blueberries, but some are gonna break down. Okay. Your raspberries, though, if you're cooking them, are gonna completely mushify. Do you put sugar on the fruit, Ellie? I did, I did uh, a third you're of a cup of sugar in each one. How much? A third of a cup. A third of a cup, okay. Yeah. So you can see, actually, I didn't add any water to my strawberry sauce, but it's already looking quite saucy. This would also be delicious on a Luxion Kugel. Just saying. No kidding. <laughs> yum, yum. Nom, nom, nom. I'm on recipes right now. I think it might be here. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. My and the cream cheese wrappers. Okay. So once you've done your um, toppings, I would personally put them in a jar or container to cool completely. That's also going to allow them to thicken up a lot more. It's going to let the flavors sort of come together even more. Um, and then you would only apply it to or uh, top your cheese a few hours before serving because um, it could sort of seep into the actual cheesecake and discolor it a little bit. Um, if you want to add spices, you could add some cinnamon. You could add some nutmeg and cloves to the blueberries. It would taste like a pie filling. So my blueberry sauce is looking very watery now. So now is a good time. I'm going to put in my slurry and I'm going to sort of thicken everything up. And for people who don't normally come to a, this little cooking class, now is around the time that my son comes to say hi to his great Bubby and all of his great aunts and Bubby and Zadie who are watching. Hi, everybody. Hi, Joey. Hey. Oh, is he ever cute? Oh, thank you. Cutie, cutie. <laughs> Joey. Oh, and Bubby and Zadie are there. Stop them. Oh, look at Daddy. Okay. Cute. Yeah. <laughs> we added our slurry to the blueberry mixture. And of course, because it's also white, it's taking it from a dark blue to a pretty purple. And I'm going to let it cook for another five minutes and it's going to reduce right down. Oh, bless you. My goodness. All right. This is officially dangerous. Say goodbye. <laughs> yeah. So this is where I like to sort of stop my strawberry sauce because I still have whole strawberries in there. They haven't completely broken down, but there is a noticeable sauce. And you can see that it's thickened because when I move my spoon through it, it takes a while to sort of fill in that spot. So that's a nice thickness for that. And let's check out the blueberries. Put the slurry in there already. Yeah. The slurry you can put in. A slurry with a fringe on top. Yeah, the slurry with a fringe. Okay. My blueberries need to like cook a lot uh, longer than my strawberries actually. 
By a lot, I mean like three minutes. And it's come to a boil now. And so that corn starch is going to get to work. Right back. So at this time, everybody, you can see the in the kitchen also. I'm pretty much done because I'm not going to make you wait an hour for my cheesecake to come out. So if you have any questions about the recipe or any recommendations for how it could be better, I'm always open to hear those. So now is the time while I let my sauce sort of cook down. Will you, will you send us the recipe? I will, mind? Yeah, I'm going to send the recipe to everybody who registered. Good. And send a picture of your finished cheesecake. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And if everybody could please send me a picture of theirs so I can show everybody what we did on our Instagram. I like showing off all of your work more than I like showing off my own. Might be a while till I get around to making one, though. <laughs> oh, <it's fine. laughs> it won't won't be it won't go into the cheesecake the cheesecake will be firm enough that it'll just sit nicely on top exactly so for your cheesecake what you want to do is once we turn it and let it cool down in the oven for that one hour then you're going to put it onto your countertop you're going to let it cool completely because in the oven even though it's off it's still a little warm let it cool completely and then put it in the fridge once it's completely firm, so you're, if you put a finger in it, you're not going to see a big indentation, then you're good to put a topping. But as I said, don't put the topping on more than four hours before serving or delivering to your friend because it could seep into the cake. Okay. I'm, I'm actually not serving the cake till Wednesday. You can freeze this cheesecake as well. Oh, but I'm not going to yet. Okay. But it'll be okay till Wednesday, no? It'll be good till Wednesday. I wouldn't do it too much longer for that, maybe five days. Um, I'm turning off my blueberries. I'm going to let them just sort of cool down and thicken up that way. But if you want to freeze it, again, let it completely cool. Cool it in your fridge as well before freezing. And then you're going to wrap it tightly with saran wrap, and then it can go into your freezer. Well, on the topping, you could probably just leave on the side too and just put it on individual servings of people. Yeah, you know. yeah, that's, that's what a good I idea. would put in yeah. a picture or something and then, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I know people are, are, are worried about sharing food these days too. On the side. Because yeah. I have some toppings, I will just be serving it based on the slice. I don't know how much cheesecake my husband and I can eat, but we're going to try. <laughs> <laughs> um, if yeah. not, we have some lovely essential workers living on our street who we've been donating a lot of this cooking class. Oh, wow. Cool. Yeah. Cool. And what's your technique for cutting the cake? <clears throat> Heat your sharp chef's knife or French, or sorry, your chef's knife with hot water, then wipe it dry so it's still warm, and then you should get nice clean cuts. Okay, great, mm. thanks. That's oh, and good then if you want to do it like a bar mitzvah, you cut around the circle first, and then you cut little slippers for everybody. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, Thank right. you. That All right, was, It was so fast. It was much faster than I thought it would be to make the cake itself. It's very, very easy. Cheesecake is an easy one, but I feel like it's so decadent that people are daunted by it. But it's a very easy cake to make. But then you have to eat a whole cake, which I guess there's worse things in the world. And if you substitute cottage cheese for part of the cream cheese, what does that do? Do you have to drain your cottage cheese? Don't drain the cottage cheese, but just I would make sure that when you food process it, you definitely make sure you get all those lumps out because I don't think even my mom would approve of cottage cheese lumps. You can, use the, you can use the pressed cottage cheese and then press it even farther. And if you really don't want to cut too much or even try to take it out, you can do it in a rectangle. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> yeah, Thank you very much.
Thank you very it much. It's actually a spring form rectangle. Thanks for joining. Oh, good. Thank idea. you very much. Thank you, you, Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's stay Thank in talk. <laughs> we can stay in chit chat. Jenny, Jenny uh, why don't you put me on your FaceTime thing? Do you, is it your phone number or your, your email address? Uh, email, I guess. Uh, we'll talk. We'll, I'll, 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 I'll talk. Thank you very much from Buffalo, New York. Thank you very much from Buffalo, New York. Very oh, special. Yeah. Thank you, Buffalo, uh, New York. Lady, yes. which, okay. Thank you from thank Buffalo, you, New York. Thanks very also. much. All right, thank thanks. You. See you, Bye. Bye. too. Bye. I'll talk to you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Joey. Bye, Bye Joey. Bye. Thanks for coming. Bye. Uh, how do we end this now? I don't know how you end Oh, I'm here. Bye, guys. Leaving. Doesn't didn't say anything. I think. She